Amen. Praise the Lord, church. If we can stand this morning. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. This is our first Sunday service in 2024. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm excited for what God is going to do this year. Amen. For what God is going to do in our lives. And before we do anything, I know a lot of us have goals. A lot of us have desires and aspirations of what this year is going to look like. But what better way to start this Sunday service by magnifying the name of Jesus, by lifting up our hands, amen? Let's not wait. Let's, let's give that same enthusiasm, that same passion. Why don't we lift up our hands and say, Lord, we magnify your name, God. Lord, we lift up your name, God. Lord, you have been great, God. You are a constant God. Lord, we love you, Lord. We love you today, God. Lord, there's a church here in Lodi, California, that this morning we woke up, God, ready to have church, God, ready to magnify your name, God. So right now, God, for a few moments, I want to worship. God. I want to magnify your name, God. I want to lift up your name in this place, God. Oh, I wonder if there's somebody that can lift up their voice a little bit, that can join me in prayer and say, I'm going to speak to you, God. I'm going to lift up my voice right now, God. I'm going to give you a little more this year, God. I'm going to start off, God, lifting up my hands, God. Lord, I desire you to be in my life, God. I desire you, God, to lead me, God. I can do nothing, God, without you being the head of my house, without you, God, leading this church, God. I can do nothing, God, without you leading me at work, God, leading me at school, leading me in everything, God. So right now, God, I pray that you be the main guest in this house, God, that you be the center of our service, God, that the Holy Ghost touch us in this place, God. Bless those that are on their way. Bless those that aren't able to make it, God. But bless us, Lord, that this morning, God, we woke up, God, ready, ready to come into your house, God, ready to worship you, ready to give you thanksgiving, ready to magnify your name, God. That's why we're here, God, to lift you up, God, to worship you, God, because you deserve it, God. You deserve it all, God. You deserve it all, Lord. <laughs> worship you God in the Holy Ghost let us worship you freely God with no baggage with no nothing in our minds with no distractions God let you Lord be the center of our minds let you God be the center of our hearts God let you lead us today God hallelujah Lord hallelujah Lord hallelujah Lord why don't we magnify him for a few seconds why don't we give him all the praise why don't we give him all the honor he abides in his praise he's here today he's here today he's here today there's a couple of us right now that are in the Holy Ghost and are feeling him today that are feeling him right now oh he's in the house he's in this place this morning hallelujah Lord hallelujah 
Hallelujah, God. You deserve it all, God. In the name of above all names, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Why don't we give her one more hand clap this morning? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's just take a moment and raise our hands and raise our voices. We thank you, Lord, for all the help you've given. We thank you for the mercy you give, Lord, for the forgiveness of sin, for the times you help us and rescue us and heal us, Lord, and bless us and minister to us. Every time we are in need, Jesus, you're a faithful shepherd. You're a faithful, loving father, and we just want to take a moment to say thank you, Lord. We praise you, and we invite, and we welcome, Lord, your presence, your spirit into this place to bless every soul, to bless every heart. Minister to us and uplift us, Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus, for your mercy and the joy. Amen. The strength that he gives to us. Amen. It is good to be in the house of the Lord again this morning. And uh, we do have several prayer requests we need to bring before the church today. Uh, we want to continue praying for the Abbey family. Uh, Pastor Bishop Abbey passed away a couple weeks ago or so and so we want the family to feel the strength and comfort of the Lord throughout this hard time. We want to continue praying for Sister Alyssa Connor, for Sister Don Cavender, for Jimmy Jackson, for Karen Stevens, and Sister Karen Bracken is sick this morning. We want to pray for her. Uh, Brother Pete Campus, Brother Don Markwell, for Marsha Mancuso, Joni Adelm, for Brother Jeremy Wilson, and Abel Mariflor, and also Sister Pat Francis is not feeling good today. So we want the Lord to bless and minister to all these. These are our brothers and sisters. They may not all be at this church, but we are still the family of God. Amen. We also want to continue praying for the nation of Israel, that there would be peace and safety in that land God has given some wonderful promises to that nation and he said he will bless those that bless Israel and he will curse those that curse Israel so uh, you decide which side you're on <laughs> but I know what side I'm on <laughs> and so we want to pray for the nation of Israel uh, you may have a need something just between you and the Lord just raise your hand God knows what it is and let's just go before him this morning Heavenly Father we thank you for your love and your faithfulness we thank you, Lord, for the peace that you give, Lord, for the mercy that you've given to us time and time again. And your word tells us to bring our needs to you because you do care for us. And your word tells us you can give us a peace that passes all human understanding. And Jesus, this morning, many needs were mentioned, many names were spoken over today, God, that need something from you Lord there may be physical needs or spiritual or mental emotional whatever it is Lord we know that you are our shepherd you do care for us you provide for us and Lord we lift up the names of all these that were mentioned this morning Jesus those that need healing we pray that you bless them those that need strength perhaps in their minds or in their spirits they may be struggling with thoughts or depression or family problems whatever it is Lord Jesus if we have you on our side God we can make it we pray Lord you bless all our brothers and sisters today Jesus that need something from you and Lord today we also pray for the nation of Israel God that you would bring safety and protection to that land Lord that you would end the wars and the the problems in that situation God according to your will let it be done and performed Jesus bless them with safety with with victory Lord and protection Jesus we love you Lord we thank you for your faithfulness we thank you for your mercy and for every prayer you've ever answered God and we pray for this service Jesus let your spirit come into this room let every heart that needs something from you may we walk out of here Jesus changed and blessed by you touched by you today minister to every soul that is here Lord we love you we thank you in Jesus name amen in Jesus name you may be seated we do have several announcements that we need to share with you uh, remember the church right now is in 21 days of prayer and fasting and so we want to just take a moment and remind you to be faithful to your prayer 
and you're fasting whatever you have chosen to do that's between you and God there's no rules on this but we want this to be a time 21 days of prayer and fasting uh, going on in the church so just a reminder to be faithful to your prayer and fasting uh, January 9th is men's coffee break that will be at the Fagala home and that will be 8 30 a.m. Uh, January 12th through the 13th two days uh, is a hyphen conference at Calvary Worship Center in Sacramento California and so uh, see brother Trevor Posey if you have any questions uh, January 20th will be a men's breakfast at Julie's Cafe here in Lodi and that will be at 8 a.m. And January 28th will be a special service here at the church. This is our, our church anniversary, all church anniversary. And we're going to be having Brother Troy Fair, the pastor of Calvary Worship Center in Sacramento. Uh, he will be the speaker for that anniversary service. And that is Sunday, January 28th. Uh, we have a couple other announcements. Praise the Lord. This coming Tuesday at 7 p.m., we will be having our initial drama rehearsal for our Easter drama this year. We are very excited about this. It is always a great time, um, but it is also such a privilege and an honor to be used of God in such a unique way. Um, so if you are interested in being a part of the drama, please see me. Um, like I said, it will be this Tuesday the 9th at 7 p.m. And this is for both cast and backstage crew. We will be going over a lot of information on Tuesday, handing out schedules, scripts, all the information that you will need going forward. So whether you want to be on um, on stage in the cast or if you want to be backstage, that is fine too. We can use all the help we can get. Uh, but be here Tuesday at 7. God bless you. Amen. Easter drama. How exciting. Uh, I always like Easter drama. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of, a lot of bloopers, a lot of funny moments that we get to be here. And uh, Anywho, we have a couple other announcements to make. How many of you remember last year, uh, middle, of, uh, middle of the year, we did a Move the Mission can fundraiser? I remember those. Anybody remember those? Just me? Okay. Uh, we're going to jump ahead of the ball this year, and we're going to try to get those out by next week. And why, why do I say that? Well, we came up a, a, a few dollars short. When I'm, I, I'm being generous by saying a few, but we want to be ahead of the ball game this year, and we want to really, really push, uh, not only as a youth department, but as a church, I believe, that uh, giving is a way of us going. Amen. I mean, if we give of our part, God honors that and God takes that much farther than any of us could ever take that dollar or that 10 cents or $100 or however much we give. But God sees our sacrifice and God honors that and God takes that into consideration. And so this year, uh, we're going we're gonna to start a little bit earlier. We're going to, throughout the year, uh, give out more cans. If you run out of cans, please come see me. We'll get you some more cans. Uh, but just keep that in the back of your minds. Uh, if you have a couple spare dollars or change or whatnot, put it away in a can and it goes for a great cause it really does and not only does it stay here for home missions churches in California but it helps enable somebody to go to another country that may not hear the gospel as you and I get to experience every single Sunday Wednesday and hopefully throughout the week every day of our lives amen that's one of the things and next um, how many of you love your youth department how many of you love your youth your young person amen Amen. So I really encourage you guys, February 2nd, it is a Friday at 730. We're going to have our first uh, uh, rally for the youth, for our Section 7 uh, midwinter rally. It's going to be in uh, Calvary Worship Center, Calvary Evangelist Center uh, in, in Sacramento and uh, at Brother Troy Ferris Church. And we're going to have Brother Drew Galloway coming from Louisiana. It's going to be a great time. It always it's a great time. It's a packed event every single year. And so please, if you have a young person or if you know somebody, uh, that has a young person, please send them our way. We would love to take them. It's a great time. Amen. Amen. God bless. Amen. Let us stand together. We are going to take a moment to receive our Sunday morning tithe and offering. Ask the ushers to come. Uh, let's take a moment and pray that the Lord will bless our giving today. Heavenly Father, again, we thank you, Jesus, for 
your faithfulness to us, for all the blessings you've given to us. We are a blessed nation. We are a blessed church. And Lord, we want to take a moment to return the blessings to you. We pray that our giving would bless your kingdom and multiply the resources, Jesus, to change our world and make things better, Lord Jesus. We pray you bless this giving in your precious name, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you give today. God, you are so good. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I praise you, mighty God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is good. Amen. I'm going to say it again. The Lord is good. Amen. You used to say that a long time ago. You'd say the Lord is good. They would say all the time. No matter what's going on in my life, the Lord is good all the time. Amen. Amen. It's good to see you in the house of the Lord. God bless you. You may be seated for a moment. Just a few things that I want to bring to your attention today. And um, I'll ask the ushers if they'd help me real quick. Um, every year we do this, um, I like to do it because I think it's very, very important. How many believe in the Bible? Okay, that's about a third of us. I'm going to say it again. How many believe in the Bible? And every year we give out a bread chart. Now bread is not just the natural bread that you eat. So I want the ushers to give one of these bread charts to every individual that's here. Young people as well. The bread chart stands for Bible reading enriches any day. And it basically is a daily Bible, stu Bible reading is what it is. And by the time you're done, you get to December 31st, you ha will have read the Bible the entire year. Now I'm going to ask a very, very important question. How many has ever read the Bible through in a year? I won't put you on the spot today. L lift your hand. You've read the, the entire Bible through in one year. I want you to lift your hand. There's some people that, here that you've never read the Bible through. And we need to. We need to know what's in that Bible. Because let me just tell you this. When it's all said and done... The only thing you're going to be judged by is what's in that Bible. Is what is in that Bible. And believe it or not, when you start reading the Word of God, there are some things that jump out to us. And we say, I never knew that was in there. We had gone to the uh, memorial service for Brother Abby yesterday. And on the way home, we were, we stopped, some of us stopped by to get a, a, a bite to eat. And but the angel brought something up to us that was in the Bible. What he hadn't, what he didn't know was that Sister Bishop and I had already talked about that very same thing. Here's one of the things. How many realize that when God spoke to Noah and said, I want you to take two of everything into the ark, he said, I want you to take seven pairs of clean animals and two pair of unclean animals. And we look, I didn't know that that was in there. See, we hear what we hear because of what we've been told or taught from the time that we are children. Or from what we hear from the pulpit. And this is one of the things I've always said. Go home and study it and see if I'm telling you the truth. Please, go home and study it and see if I'm telling you the truth. I'm going to tell you the truth, but I want you to be in the Word of God. And so at the end of the year, one of the things that we try to do is we try to give out an award for each and every individual that read the Bible through. We'll see how many read the Bible through this year. Let me also say that it is very, very important that we are in the Bible. But it's also equally important that the Bible is in us. Because everything won't be like it is today, maybe. <clears throat> Meaning that we're starting a brand new year. 
first Sunday service this year. And maybe things look bright and cheery and things of that nature, but let me tell you this, there's going to be a day, there's going to be a time when things won't be cheery and bright. Because one phone call can change our life. It really can. And the only thing that's going to stand at that and during that day is the Word of God. The Bible says in the book of Psalms that His Word is above His name. Heaven and earth will pass away, but God's Word will never pass away, the Bible says. You can count on it. I don't care what anybody else says. I don't care what the richest man says. I don't care what a politician says. I don't care what the president says. I stand on the Word of God because the Word of God is true. Can I get an amen? amen? And then another thing that was brought up today. How, how many realize how old this church is here in Lodi? I love this church. I love the history of this church. Back in December, we had the end of our uh, advanced summit down in Visalia. And Brother Troy Fair was there. And um, I've known Brother Fair before either one of us were married. He was talking about when he was traveling, uh, evangelizing. And uh, I looked over at my wife and I said, finally, a man after my own heart. What was it about? He actually asked his wife to marry him in the car. You say, what does that have to do with anything? My wife knows because I asked her to marry me in front of 19, in, on 1981 Cherokee Road in front of Christian Life College in a 1973 Vega hatchback. And she said yes. And when Brother Fair was talking about him and Jen going down to Fresno and he asked her to marry him while they were traveling down the road, I said, finally, a man after my own heart. Brother Fair is our district secretary, and he does an incredible job, not only at that, but an incredible job as pastor of Calvary Worship Center. And while he was there in Visalia, I just felt led of the Holy Ghost to ask him if he would come and preach on the 28th of January. There's a reason for that. Um, the 29th of January, Sister Bishop and I became pastors of Lodi Christian Life be five years five years and God has blessed us abundantly in those five years we've had some ups we've had some downs but through it all God has always blessed us can I get an amen maybe things have not gone as fast as we wanted them to go or maybe they went too fast for some of you that are here but God is always on time and that's five years for us. But the church has been here in Lodi this year is 107 years. It is the second oldest apostolic church in the state of California. The second oldest apostolic church in the state of California. The first is actually Turlock, which started in 1914. The second one was this church right here, started in 1917. And then the third one actually started in 1917 as well, and that was in Visalia. But in talking to the elders of our district, they said Lodi was the second oldest apostolic church that was in the, in the um, state of California. That says something to me. And in the course of that length of time God has given great blessings and great promises to this church I stand on the shoulders of giants who have passed through this church and I say that sincerely and humbly individuals like the first district superintendent brother J. Johnson brother William Pear another district superintendent an individual that my grandfather knew, Brother Odell Cagle, another district superintendent, pastored this church. 
individual who brought it into the United Pentecostal Church by the name of Brother Clarence Riddlesberger. An individual that I loved very, very much and loved sitting down talking to him and pastored it for 10 years. That was Brother Jesse Francis. And an individual that is my hero that pastored it for 45 years and was some of your pastor for a very, very, very long time. And that is our own Bishop Richard Francis right here. And God has given each and every one of them a promise. Some of those promises have come to pass. Some of those promises are still yet to come to pass. And we thank the Lord for them. God made me promises laying right here on this floor. And I had an armload of promises that were out there. And the Lord just spoke into my spirit and said, Richard, I will do all of those for you. If you'll just do one thing, don't control it. Gently guide it, but don't control it. And that's what we've tried to do. So when I stand here, I stand here humbly because of the men who have gone on before me and the saints who went on before you to allow us to enjoy what we enjoy today. There are people that I wish were here. Oh, I wish Grandma Francis were here. I do. She saw this day before any of us ever saw it. But she didn't live long enough in which to see it. She was 105 and some months old when she passed away. She tried. She tried staying around as long as she could. But oh, I wish you could see what the Lord is doing today. I don't have scripture for this. But maybe in the back of my mind somewhere, God is allowing them to see that very thing that they dreamed of. And so on the 20th, 8th of January, a Sunday morning, we're going to have a church anniversary service. I didn't say a pastoral anniversary service. I said a church anniversary service. We'll encompass it all together because we're all enjoying this. Now, to my knowledge, we don't have the exact date of when this church started. We don't. We just know that it was in 1917. And it was started by an individual by the name of Pastor Berg. Pastor Berg was his name. But we thank God for the vision that God gave that original pastor and the vision that God gave all the other pastors that came after him until this very day. But we're going to come and we're going to rejoice and we're going to thank the Lord for what he has done in each and every one of our lives. Amen. Let us stand. There is a lot of sickness that is going on. Um, I was talking to Sister Nancy McCune just the other day, and we have three ladies who work in the hospital. Sister uh, Chrissy Cardona is here today. Sister Tammy Campus is working, and Sister Nancy is working. They all work at Lodi Memorial Hospital here in town. And I was talking to Sister Nancy the other day, and she said, Brother Bishop, she said, it is so full in the emergency rooms. We have had individuals that have been sick. They're going on their second and third time of being sick right now. And I'm going, God, you've got to touch our congregation. You've got to touch this church. We need you to reach down and do a work in this church, Lord. And I believe that God is going to do that. But I'm glad to see you in the house of the Lord today. It's good to have Mike and Angel with us today. Glad that you're here today. Amen. Little story behind that, Sister Carlene met them and uh, they started coming to Overcomers. And so they go to Overcomers and we're glad that they're here today. God bless them. Lauren, I see you here today. Good to see you. Amen. God bless you. It's good to have the Osuna family with us. Uh, Sister Osuna's sister and brother-in-law all the way from Mississippi. Glad that you're here today. Amen. Sister Alana, it's good to have your family here today as well. God bless you. Delighted to have you. Your nephew all the way from Taiwan, delighted that you're here as well. Turn around and greet each other in the name of the Lord this morning. This morning, we have um, a lot of, like I said earlier, we have a lot of people absent. And uh, some of the people that are on the platform actually are doing double duty because they have to leave. And they've got to go over to Grace Community Church. 
If you were not here um, the other day, I just want you to know that we actually have changed the church name in Woodbridge um, to Grace Community Church is what it's called. And so we, uh, we thank the Lord for what God is doing there as well. One thing that I did fail to mention before I have the praise team come back, and uh, that is this coming Wednesday. I'm going to invite, I want everyone that can be here Wednesday to be here because I'm going to speak to the church on moving forward, where we're going moving forward. Uh, God has opened some great doors for us and um, great opportunity for us. And I am of the mind that I keep the church informed of what's going on because it's not my church. We realize it's not your church either. It's God's church, right? But we are here and we are stewards of God's church is all we are. And so um, this coming Wednesday uh, for our Wednesday Bible study, I'm going to be speaking about where we're going, what we're doing, where we're, uh, how we're moving forward, some opportunities that have presented themselves to us, and um, just want to talk to the church uh, about those opportunities and those situations. Amen. God bless the worship team as they come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, that is a day that we are looking forward to, Lord. We don't know the hour, the day, or the time, but we know, Lord, that you're still coming back. We know that you're still coming back, Lord, and what a day that will be. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Amen. I was standing there, and I don't want to throw him under the bus, but Brother Jeremy looked at me, and he said, those are kind of songs that you like, aren't they, Pastor? I said, yeah, I do like those songs. He said, because it's all about him. It's all about him. It's not about me. John p puts it very, very well. He must increase, but I must decrease. And the older that I get, the more I look forward to heaven. I do. Amen, amen, amen. Again, thank you for being here today. Uh, so good to have each and every one of you here on the very first Sunday of the new year. If you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter 3. At this time, the children may go to their Sunday school classes. But if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn with me to the book of Philippians chapter 3. I have quoted this scripture on many, many occasions. You have done the same. I have read it over and over and over again. But for whatever reason, never from the standpoint that I'm going to preach it today. Um, not from this title anyway. The Apostle Paul says this in Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth into those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And I like what the New Living Translation says. It says, no, brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it. And that's how I feel today. I have not arrived. Just because I have on a suit doesn't mean anything. Just because we're in a nice building doesn't mean anything. It's what God has done for us. He said, but I focus on this one thing forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. God bless you. You may be seated. This week, before Sister Bishop was on her way to work, she... Uh, gave me some instructions before I came over to the church. She said, can you do me a favor? I said, sure. She said, there are clothes that are in the dryer and they need to come out. Can you take them out for me and put the clothes that are in the washing machine in the dryer? And I said, sure, not a problem. And like a good husband, 
All you husbands need to be saying amen right about now. I'm trying to help you guys out right here, okay? I did exactly what she asked me to do. It was a honeydew. Honey, can you do this for me? Yes, I can. So I did exactly what she asked. I took the clothes out of the dryer, put them in the hamper, and I even went an extra mile. But Sergio, I folded them babies. I didn't say I ironed them. I said I folded them. And I put the ones that were in the washing machine in the dryer. And I went about my day. And I came home later on that afternoon. And I thought, well, you know what? She's working all day today. I'm going to take all these clothes out of the dryer. And I'm going to fold them for her. And so I reached in. And I grabbed a hold of these clothes. And I put them into the, the hamper that was right there. And all of a sudden, it's like they all started to come alive. They were clinging to one another. There was, there was Rice Krispies in the dryer. Snap, crackle, pop. Why? Because I forgot to do one thing. I left it on the counter this morning. I put them in a baggie and I brought them with, I was going to bring them with me. And said, does anybody know what these things are right here? We call them dryer sheets, right? When I was a boy, I would, I would uh, go to my friend's house. And we'd have a great time. We'd play out in the woods and something most kids don't know how to do anymore. We had outside activities and we were out in the field. We were out in the woods. We were down by the pond or the creek or whatever. And we'd come home to his house and, and, and we'd get cleaned up. We'd, we'd take a shower. We'd put on our pajamas and we would go to bed. But I would put my head down on that pillow in the, in the, morning, in, in the evening, Brother Carl, and, and I'm going, that don't smell like my mama sheets. That don't smell like my mama sheets. And I would come home and I would look at my mom and I would say, <clears throat> Mom, I said, we had a great time. She'd ask questions, have a good time. We had a great time. I said, Mom, there's one thing. I said, how come so-and-so pillowcases and sheets don't smell like yours? Mom, yours smells like downy. And she asked a million dollar question. Well, what did their smell like? I don't know, but it's not downy. And all of a sudden, you could see your mom as she kind of stood a little bit taller, kind of puffed her chest out just a little bit and said, hmm, this is nice. But the dryer sheet was not made to smell good. That's not why it was made. The dryer sheet was made for one purpose. It was to keep the clothes from clinging to one another. And this morning, for a little while, I want to preach on this topic. Static cling. Static cling. Today, there are 8 billion people in the world that have made different New Year's resolutions. And here are the top 15 for in America. Exercise more. Improve my finances. Improve my mental health. Lose weight. Yeah, right. Improve my diet. Make more time for my family. Stop smoking. Learn a new skill. Make time for my hobbies. Improve work and life balance. Travel more. Meditate regularly. Drink less alcohol. Perform better at work and save more money. But let me just tell you this right now. At, even though those sound good, and they are, after 30 days, most of them will go by the wayside because of four reasons. Procrastination, lack of discipline, no game plan, and there's nobody there to help them, or they do it alone. 
But for a Christian, and if I have that cling-free napkin in my hand, it has one purpose and one purpose only. And that is static cling. To be free of static cling. When the Apostle Paul is speaking in the book that I read to you this morning called Philippians, he's talking to the Philippian church, he's saying, forgetting those things which are behind. He's referring to not looking back at relationships, bad relationships. And let me just say this right here. There are some relationships that we don't need to be involved in as a Christian. Oh, hang on. I'm not going to be long, but I'm going to be honest. We found ourselves involved in certain things in 2023 that if we saw the end of it, we wouldn't want to be involved in it anymore. I've seen it happen on more than one occasion. It's even happened to me when I was a young person. I was at this funeral for Brother Abby yesterday and I saw a man, he was sitting in the same row that I was getting ready to go in and I've known him a long time. I knew his mother and father longer than I knew him. But I've known him a long time. His name is Brother Randy Underwood. And I'm standing there. And the reason that his mother and father are so close to me because when I was a backslidden Pentecostal young preacher's kid in the rodeo 30, 35 years ago, when I came into the church, I walked into the church in Yuba City, California on Live Oak Boulevard and walked right up the center aisle, looked that preacher in the eye and said, Preacher, I need God. I was an alcoholic. And that day, he came on my left side and she came on my right side and prayed about a back, a backslidden preacher's kid through the Holy Ghost. And I looked at Brother Randy Underwood and I made this statement to him. I said, who would have thought that an individual that has only been in your dad's church for three months would sign an application for him to go to Bible college and that would change the course of his life? But what a lot of people don't understand is that we do things the way we do things in the world and a young man and a young lady see each other and all of a sudden they, I'm going to use my own terminology, I'm going to use young people's terms, they kind of have a spark. My daddy was an old-fashioned individual and he looked at me and said, that's not going to take place. My dad wasn't a prophet, but my dad was a wise old man. And I remember him looking at me and said, that's not her. It's almost like he was Samuel. And he goes to the house of Jesse and says, show me all your boys because the king is coming out of this house. Nope, not him, not him, not him, not him. Do you have any more? It's almost like Jesse starts kicking rocks. He said, yeah, I got one, but he's out tending the sheep. And I love what Samuel says. He says, we will not sit down until he come hither. And they bring David in. He's a good-looking 16-year-old red-headed boy. The Bible says that Samuel uncorked the horn of oil and poured it on top of him. Does that mean that he was ready? Does that mean that he had all of his ducks in a row? No. God just saw what he was going to be. Sometimes what happens in our life, even as my own life as a young kid, making wrong decisions, God didn't look at that and hold that against me. What he did is says, I don't see that right now. What I see is what you're going to be. And listen to me when I tell you this. I'm a 60-year-old man, but I have not arrived yet. And the Apostle Paul says, we have not attained. He said, but there's some things that you need to understand. You need to forget some things that took place in 2023 and leave it there. Hear your pastor right now. There are some situations that took place in 2023 and you need to leave it there. Don't bring it into 2024 with you. Maybe you didn't attain everything you wanted to attain. Maybe you didn't accomplish everything you wanted to accomplish. Maybe you didn't see take place everything you wanted to see take place. But leave it there. It's not going to do you any good to bring it up again. All it is, is what I said earlier. It's nothing more than static cling. 
If you don't put that dryer sheet in with those clothes, Brother Sergio, all those clothes are going to come out in one fell swoop and socks are going to be hooked to socks and this is going to be hooked to that. And too many times what happens, I wish I had some static cling dry, spiritual dryer sheets I could just kind of throw in the crowd right now and give it to everybody in the crowd because there's some things that you're taking into 2024 that God is looking at us and saying, don't bring that in 2024. I've got something better for you in 2024 than what took place in 23. There's some memories that took place in 23 that God's saying, leave it alone. Don't touch it. There's some things that took place and, and they mull over in our mind and they sit there and they ferment in our mind and we get bitter and we get hurt and we get angry and we get all kinds of things over the, what's going on. And God's saying, I need you to let it go. I need you to let it go. I know what I'm talking about because I had it happen in 2023. Either those things will move me forward in, in areas I don't and I don't and I shouldn't go in, or I leave it alone and say, okay, God, you take care of it. Forgetting those things which are behind. I preach a message entitled, The Windshield is Bigger Than Your Rearview Mirror. Too many times what we are doing is we're looking in the rear view mirror of what took place and woulda, coulda, shoulda, and God's saying, pull that thing off, toss it in the trunk, and keep on driving because you've got a bright future in 2024. And with you and Jesus, you make a majority. Stop dwelling in the past. To inspire his audience, Paul drew on an image of an athlete running a race with uncompromising determination to reach the finish line and win the prize. I like what the New Living Translation says in the passage. I focus on one thing, forgetting the past. Everyone say forgetting. No, say it, forgetting. Forgetting the past. I was sitting right here. Right here. When the message came in. Individual walked in that door on a Sunday night. And this is what it said. Pastor, you need to go to the county hospital. I love this story. But then again, I'm going to be totally honest with you. I love your story and your story and your story and Rick's story. You see, Bishop Francis, I don't know everybody's story here because I wasn't here then. You were. And there are stories that you know. You know Ron's story. You know Matt's story. You know Darren and Leanne's story. But I know your story. You know Carl's story. But I know Manny's story. I know Paloma's story. And every one of us here today, we have a testimony. And it's not like everybody else's. And sometimes if we're not careful, we get to looking around saying, I don't have a suit. You want mine? I'll give it to you. Just let me get another change of clothes first. Not a problem with me. My clothes don't make me. He makes me. He makes me. He makes me. I move and I live and I have my being because of him. Not because of what I put on. But I sat there and I got that story that night that you had had two strokes. You shouldn't be here. You should not be here, Brother Sergio. You had two strokes that night. I left this sanctuary, drove over to County Hospital on I-5. They wouldn't let me in. So I put my hand on the door and I said, God, you can go where I can't. I need you to go in and I need you to do a work in that man's life. We're not talking about an individual who didn't know God. You had seen God do so many different things and now you're seeing God do even more things. I 
I look at Brother Jeremy. We know his story. I'm not going to go there. But he's here today. He may be on a pair of crutches, but thank God he's here. It wasn't nice. What happened? It wasn't nice. But a doctor looks at you and says, and people look at you and say, you should be dead right now. Brother Manny, Brother Manny, you're the one who's telling me this. You know an individual who lost brothers because of the same thing that happened to him. Three brothers all died of the same thing that he had happened to him. A blood clot in his leg. And people in this church went up to that hospital, San Juan Mercy Hospital, elders and young people and pastors and everybody walked in and started laying hands on him and praying for him. And where the doctor said, you know what, you're going to lose your leg. I said, no, you're not. In Jesus' name, you're not. He still has that leg today. But if we're not careful, we can let the things that have taken place in our past hinder our future. And we can look and we can say, but what about this and what about that and what about something else? I don't have the right name. You don't have to have the right name. As long as you have Jesus' name, that's the only name you need. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved, the Bible says. It doesn't make, if you're, make any difference if your name is McCune or Bishop or, 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 or Olivas. It makes no difference as long as you have Jesus in your heart and in your spirit. Yeah. Paul is looking at them and he's saying, you know what? You need to put all this stuff behind you and focus on what God is telling us. The word forgetting in Philippians 3 and 13 means simply this. Dismissing from my mind or paying no attention to. To forget in this way is to stop dwelling on something. Hear me, there's some of you that the devil always whispers, this is what you did. This is what you did. God can't use you because this, 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 and this. And that's a lie from the pit of hell. I heard an old preacher say, when the devil starts reminding you of your past, start reminding him of his future. And I like that. I like that. And I look and I'm saying, why do we listen to the enemy then? When the Apostle Paul said, forget the past. Let the past be in the past. And reach for those things which are before us. We've come through a 2023. And for some of us, it wasn't a pretty year. And I don't know what's going to happen in 2024. But I know who holds 2024. The same one who held 2023 and the same one who held 1903 is the same one who's holding 2024. I don't know what's going to take place. I don't have some crystal ball. My hand is in the master's hand and I travel with him just like you do. But I know one thing, the same God that kept us all those years ago since 1917, Bishop Francis, is the same God that was not only with Pastor Burke, but he's with us this very, very day on this very first Sunday of the, of the month of January 2024. And the psalmist David put it this way, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. I don't trust in the arm of the flesh. I don't trust in the arm of the world. I trust in God. That's all I have. I have no other thing to fall back on. If you look at the old prophet that followed Elijah, Elijah was, he was a rough cob of a, of, a, of a preacher he was a old testament john the baptist is what he was and he walks up to elisha who comes from a household of means because the bible tells us he's plowing with 12 yoke of, yoke of oxen he comes from a household of means and the old man of god just put, places a mantle over top of him brother keith and turns around and walks away and that young farmer comes running up to him and says, what? What's going on? The old man of God says, what, do I, what am I having to have anything to do with you? Well, if you knew anything about the times and the customs, you knew exactly what that meant. 
when he put that mantle over top of him, Brother Kimmel, it was like, okay, you're my apprentice now. But I love what Elisha did. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says that Elisha went back and he burned the oxen. And he burned the yoke that the oxen were inside of. In other words, there was no other means. This is all I've got. And I'm burning it to follow you, Lord. There's some people that got one hand in the world. They got one hand following Jesus. And if Jesus doesn't work out, I'm going to go over here. It doesn't work that way. You follow the Lord and that's who we follow. Nothing more, nothing less. I like the old song. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow him. There's no turning back, the, 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 the song says. There's no turning back. They looked at Jesus and Jesus said, will you stop following me as well? Will you leave me as well? And Peter looked at him and said, Lord, where are we going to go? Who can we turn to? You have the gift of life. I look around here this morning and I'm saying, where can we go? Who can we turn to? We have nobody else to turn to except God. That's all we have. That's all you need. Hear me and hear me well. That is all you need. You see, living for God sometimes is not about what we think it is. We think it's all about the hype sometimes. You want to know what living for God is? Watch me. It's just walking with God. That's what it is. It's not about conferences. It's not about conventions. It's not about any of that kind of stuff. It's not about impact. It's not about its time. It's not about revivals. What I'm speaking about called static cling is leaving all that mess that happened in 2023 behind you. Put that spiritual dryer sheet in there so you can separate some things and say, okay, God, that's staying back there, but I've got a new day in front of me right here. Forgetting those things which are behind me and reaching forward to those things which are before me. I strive, I press for the prize of the high calling that's before us. Stop dwelling on the past. Don't let anything behind you interfere with your present progress or your future. The personal growth of a, of a believer was a constant priority in the Apostle Paul's life, and he strained with every fiber of his being to keep moving forward to win the prize for which God called him. We're not talking about a man who didn't know God. We're not talking about a man who didn't know the Bible. The Apostle Paul was a Pharisee among Pharisees. He knew the Bible, but he didn't know Jesus. You can go to Lodi Christian life. You can do everything that you know that you need to do and still not know God. Come on. Come on. I know individuals who preach the word of God, but they didn't know God. I know individuals who are sinner men that don't have a relationship with God but they read the Bible every day. Here's one for you. I don't know that much about the man. His name is Denzel Washington. He's an African-American actor. But let me tell you what he does every day. He reads the Bible. Google it when you go home and see if your pastor's telling you the truth. He reads the Bible every day. Doesn't mean that he's a Christian. Doesn't mean that he's following God. It means that he's an avid reader of the Word of God. And hoping somewhere along the line that it illuminates something off of the pages of God's Word and convicts him in his heart and in his spirit that he has a relationship with who Jesus is. The Apostle Paul was the same way. He knew the law. He knew it backward and forward. Gamaliel was his teacher. But he didn't know who Jesus was. What are some things, Pastor, that we need 
to move forward into the new year. I'm glad that you ask. Here's what it is. Be faithful to church. And I know I'm speaking to the choir. I'm not talking about if you're sick. If you're sick, please stay home. But I'm going to tell you what. I need the church. I'm going to say that again. This is not a church. This is a building. But I need you. I need you in my life. I need you in my life. The Bible says that iron sharpens iron. And I need to be around you. For me to be the Christian man that I need to be. For me to be the Christian husband that I need to be to my wife. And the Christian father to my children. And the Christian grandfather to my, to my grandchildren. And the Christian pastor that I need to be. I need to be around you. We need one another in 2024. We're not an island unto ourselves. We need each other. The greatest gift you can give to this preacher right here, I'm going to tell you what it is. You don't have to go out and buy me anything. Just come to church. Just come to church. Because I need that. I need that in my life. Someone looked at me the other day and they said, I was on the phone. There's supposed to be a baptism today. And uh, I was on the phone with a lady uh, for two hours. She called my house. And um, um, we were just finishing up, I believe, our, our Bible reading for the day. And, and we're just talking. And, and the phone rings. And I didn't recognize the number. Um, and, but I answered the phone. And she looked at me and she told me what her name was. She said, my sister has been there, yada, yada. And she said, uh, can you explain baptism in Jesus' name to me? And for the next two hours, I listened to her, and then I explained to her the scriptures. And she said, Pastor Bishop, she said, I need to be baptized in Jesus' name. I said, yes, ma'am, you do. I said, because there's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Do you realize that when people get baptized in that tank up there, that it's helping so many different individuals, Sister Ellingsworth? Because yesterday I looked at individuals and they said, I saw that you baptized two individuals last week. I said, yeah. I said, I got another one to baptize tomorrow. These are, these are churches that have been in existence a very long time. He said, what we see going on in Lodi, California encourages us. Do you understand? We don't live for God for ourselves, but people are watching us. I don't believe that you can be saved and go to church one time a week. I just don't. We need each other. Again, if you're sick, I get that. But where is God on our priority list? Come on. Where's God on my priority list? Hello? I cannot be saved by just going to church one time a week. I'll become a cold Christian. Why? Because I need you. One of those other cling-free things that we need to get out of our life in 2024 is simply this. Forgive those that hurt you in 2023. Come on. Now, I am not, I'm not preaching to you. I am preaching to me. I am preaching to me. Because I went through that. I was hurt so deeply. And I lay on this floor. And I laid on the floor in Visalia. Because of the hurt that I had gone through in 2023. They looked at Jesus one day and they said, Master, where did you get those scars at? He said, I got those in the house of my friends. And sometimes the ones that we love the most can hurt us the deepest. And if we're not careful, we harbor that in our spirit. And we come to the house of God and we try to raise our hands and our prayers get no higher than the top of our head because we are filled with things that the devil wants us to be filled with, with anger and bitterness and guile and all this mess because of what has happened in our life. And then the devil sits back and goes, My job's done! My job's done! And we walk into the house of God and we sit in the house of God and we hear the praises of the, of 
the, the saints. We hear the preaching of the man of God, whoever may be behind the pulpit that day. But we don't move because we are filled with things that should never be filled in our spirit. Paul put it this way, forgetting those things which are behind me. I didn't say they treated you right. I didn't say they did you right. I didn't say they did me right. But there's one thing I will not do. I will not let something come between me going to heaven. Hear me. I won't let something come between me going to heaven. I'm going to heaven whether she wants to go to heaven or not. I'm going to heaven whether you want to go to heaven or not. I'm going to heaven because I want to see Jesus. I'm hurrying. We need to love one another. We need to love one another. We're all different. That's what I love about this church. We're all different. We've got short and tall, skinny and none of your business. You got nationality of people in here. You got Hispanics in here. You got African Americans in here. You got Heinz 57s in here. We don't know what we are. But this is what I love about Lodi Christian Life. You can come through those doors right there or that door right there and it doesn't make any difference where you come from or what you've done. It does not. I've made this statement. I'm going to make it right here. I don't care how they look when they come in the church. I don't care if she comes in a thong bikini and he comes in a speedo. You heard me right. I just said it. Leave them alone and let God deal with them. Because God can cover, I can cover up their nakedness with a choir robe or a baptismal robe. But sometimes God can't even take care of our spirits if we're not careful. And when people walk in this door, I want them to feel Jesus. I want them to feel the love of the people when they walk in. I love this young lady right here, her husband, their son. We go a long way back, a long way back. All the way back in L1, 2, and 3 at Christian Life College when the Holy Ghost would fall in those classrooms and we would just have a move of God. And life does what life does. But Matt, sometimes it just beats us up. We don't know how to deal with it at times. And I remember Angel coming in on Hillborn and sitting toward the back. And now I was privileged just back in November on this platform to marry her and Brother Kevin. I was privileged to dedicate their little boy, little Kevin, right here. I've been privileged to be in their home and teach them Bible studies in their home. And for some of you who don't know it, I'll throw her underneath the bus. She can sing like a lark. So we've got plans for her this year, and she don't even know it yet. <laughs> the point I'm making is that people need to be able to walk into the church and know that they are loved, but not have people look down on them because of what they have done. Come on. Come on. Give them a chance to grow. Give them a chance to be loved. I know that there's some in here that you've been living for the Lord longer than me, and I've had the Holy Ghost for 50 years. But I'm going to be honest with you and tell you this. I still make mistakes. I still mess up. And there are times I still have to go to people and apologize. Because something I might have done unintentionally. 
Or sometimes I let this get in my way before I engage this. Come on. Come on. You're going to see one of the most transparent guys you've ever seen in your life right here. But I also know where God brought me from. And he brought me a mighty long way. And I understand when people walk in this church because I was there not long ago. To some, it may have been a long time ago. But to me, the key, Scott, it wasn't all that long ago. I only had the Holy Ghost from the time of July to October when I came to Christian Life College, sitting in a pew, at Christian, a seat at Christian Life College. I love that song. He's still working on me to make me what I ought to be. I'm not going to go through all of these, but I am going to get to this one here, and I'm closing. There's some of you, under the sound of my voice right now, that you've got talent, and you've got ability, and you could help the kingdom of God so much in this community. And maybe you did it before, but because of things that took place in the past, we become guarded in our heart. And we guard our heart. But the Bible says in the book of Proverbs that out of the heart comes all the issues of life. And we don't do what we used to do, and some of you can't. I was looking at Brother Ellingsworth the other day, and <clears throat> we were cleaning up after the social. He's 87 years old. And I was going to take a table from him. You ever try to take anything from Brother Ellingsworth? And I got kindly rebuked. I got this. That's what it was. In a very different voice tone. But I got this. And I said, okay, Papa. At 82 years old in this sanctuary, laying this carpeting, there was carpet remnants that were left, and there was old carpet that was here. And at 82 years old, Brother Howe, he picked up that carpet at 82, put it on his shoulder, a roll, and walked it out that door at 82 years old. Now, I try, you know and I know that you ain't going to stop him when he gets his mind made up. And I love it. <clears throat> I love it. But there's some of us here today. Hear me and hear me well. There's some of us here today that you've got talent that is in this building. And I am asking that you put your talent to work again this year. There are people that need you. I can only do what God called me to do, Brother Carl. That's all I can do. But it takes all of us at Lodi Christian Life to build this church. It doesn't happen because of one family. First of all, let me just tell you something right here. This church does not belong to the Bishop family. It doesn't belong to the Francis family. It belongs to God. <clears throat> and we are all part of that family, the kingdom of God. As we stand this morning, you've got talents, you've got abilities. Don't hang your harp on the willow. Some of you are saying, I wish I could, but I'm older now and I can't do what I used to do. Young men for war, old men for wisdom. And maybe you can't do what you used to do, but there's one thing that you can do. The Bible says that Barnabas was a son of consolation. That's what his name meant, son of consolation. What that name means was son of encouragement. That's what consolation means. He was a son of encouragement. And I love this story of the old charioteer. In ancient times, the chariot driver never retired. He never did, there was no retirement. 
So when he was getting too old, Sister Harrison, to continue with the chariot and drive the chariot, they would put a new chariot driver in front. And the old chariot driver just took two steps behind. Can you come out here a minute, Bishop Francis? I'm going to use an illustration right here. You stand right, right behind me. He pastored this church for 45 years. 45 years. And all of a sudden, a guy 20 years or so, his junior, comes in behind him. Great ideas and all kind of vim and vinegar, as my daddy used to say, and excitement. We can do this and we can do that. And we can. Sometimes... I got the reins and I'm going around the corner and I might be going just a little bit too fast, Brother Kimmel. And here I am, I'm just slapping those horses, Brother Ron, and we're just going and going and going. And he's holding on for dear life. And that's exactly what he's doing. I'm going around the corner and he's giving it the balance it needs. Can I get an amen? And there's going to be a day that I'm going to be right where he's at and somebody else is going to be right here where I'm at. But let me tell you about this man right here. Not one time in five years has he ever looked at me and said, we can't do this. <clears throat> he's looked at me and said, don't do what I did. Change it up. Be who you are. So I'm looking at us today and I'm saying this, thank you. There's a place for all of us. We just got to let the past be the past. Her name was Mrs. Johnson. She was going in for open heart surgery. They allowed her pastor to come in and pray for her before she went in for open heart surgery. And then they put him up in the gallery so that he could watch the surgery take place. And then the doctor proceeded to do the open heart surgery and fix the valves that needed to be fixed at that point. They took her off of the heart bypass machine. And she started breathing. But her heart would stop. And then they would have to shock her heart back. And they would just shake their head. And finally, the doctor got down next to Mrs. Johnson and said, Mrs. Johnson, this is your surgeon. I've done everything I can. The surgery was a success. But Miss Johnson, you need to tell your heart to beat again. And there's some of you that are here today at the very first Sunday of 2024. And you need to tell your heart to beat again. Because there are people that need you. You have things to offer the kingdom of God that I don't have. Oh, I wish I did. But because of hurts and circumstances, you've guarded your heart. And now Jesus is coming down next to you, lying on that spiritual operating room and saying, you need to let your heart beat again. Because God needs you. The church needs you. I need you the kingdom of God needs you and you need to let your heart beat one more time you're saying but preacher you don't know what I went through in 2023 I know I don't but I know what I went through in 2023 and there were times I just wanted to throw the towel and say you know what it's not worth it 
But really it is. And Sister Scott, it really is. When you got those little kids who come running up to you and put their arms around their leg and you look down in their eyes and they look up at you, all of a sudden, but those soon it's worth it at that point because you know that you're making a difference in somebody's life because you're allowing your heart one more time to beat again. Put all the hurts, all the anger, all the bitterness, leave it in 2023. Let God put a static cling dryer sheet spiritually on you so it doesn't stick to you coming into 2024 and leave it there. There's an old song that says, leave it there, leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. This morning, I want us just to come. If you're here for the first time, come. You're among friends. If this is your home church, I want you to come. But I want us to come and I want us to make a brand new commitment to God on the first Sunday of 2024 saying, God, it's going to be different in 2024. It's not going to be the same way that it was in 2023. I'm not going to harbor this. I'm not going to keep this, God. I'm letting it go, Jesus. I'm letting it go. I don't want just a few individuals. I want us all to come down and make a brand new commitment to God. I don't want us to make a resolution. They never last after 30 days, but I want us to make a commitment to the Lord and say, God, I'm making a brand new commitment to you. I'm going to let my heart beat again. I'm going to let my heart beat again. As you come, just lift your hands and lift your voice to the Lord right now all across this house, all across this house right now and say, God, we make a brand new commitment to you. A brand new commitment to you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. A brand new commitment to you, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're leaving 23 where it is, God. But we're making a brand new commitment to you this morning, Lord, that we're going to start afresh, God. God, we give our lives to you. We give our hearts to you. We're committed to you, Lord. Yes, we've been hurt. Yes, we went through some situations. Yes, we made mistakes, God, and we even sinned, Lord. But God, we leave it in the past. We're forgetting those things which are behind, God, and reaching forward to those things which are before us. We're pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling today, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And maybe you might be here today and you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Today is a great day for you to be baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, and start 2024 with a new commitment in Jesus' name today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I praise you, God. I glorify you, Jesus. You are great, Lord, and you are greatly to be praised. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, Lord, I Christian life, lean over to somebody and touch them on the shoulder right now. Let's pray for one another. You don't know what somebody's going through right now. You don't know what's happening in their life right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I make a new commitment, a brand new commitment for you, Lord. A brand new commitment, God, to be used of you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I praise you, mighty God. I glorify you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God, you are so good. I am so grateful for each and every individual in this sanctuary right now. God, what they mean to me. God, the, the impact that they have made upon my own personal life, Lord. God, bless them right now. Touch them by the power of the Holy Ghost. Let this be a new year for them, Lord Jesus, I pray. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I love you, Lord. I praise you, mighty God. I glorify glorify you. I give you praise today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I praise you. I glorify you, Lord. 
You are wonderful, God. You are wonderful, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I praise you, God. I praise you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, you're wonderful. Lord, keep your hand upon each and every family that's in this church, God. Guide us and lead us in 2024, Lord. Your will be done, God, in this church, Lord, as we're trying to reach this city for you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.